Good evening, and welcome to Great Emmanuel Brotherhood Overview. Today's lesson will be coming out of the book of Daniel, chapters 1 and 2, and we'll finish in chapter 6. Now, brothers, my time is short, but through prayer, God has showed me how to teach this lesson so that you will know the truth about his message. The title is, When God Favors You. Brothers, that title alone, when God favors you, has to have us thinking, this is somebody that is committed to being a godly man. If you have God's favor. He doesn't look like Tarzan at times. Then act like James. Compromising. No. His life was uncompromising. Nobody did this better than the prophet Daniel. One virtue God gave Daniel was righteousness. You can see it in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14. He never had a price where he gave in. He always was sold out on the true and living God. Hallelujah. Even at his early teenage years, 15 and 17, Daniel was amazing. God-fearing. He was a great example of how to live and work as a believer in a hostile environment. Because all his life, with the exception of his very younger years, he lived in Babylon, under the captivity of King Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed his people, the Israelites, to be captured by the Babylonians in 607 BC. Due to their disobedience and rebellion against him, God wants godly men he can favor because they are uncompromising. Adam compromised God's law by following his wife's sin, eating of the apple, and lost paradise. Abraham compromised the truth when he lied about Sarah being his sister and nearly lost his wife. Sarah compromised God's word and influenced Abraham to lay with Hagar who had a child that they named Ishmael. Today Ishmael is considered to be the father of the Arabic nations and we haven't had peace since in the Middle East. Esau compromised for a meal with Jacob and lost his birthright. Brothers, God is looking for men like Daniel and his three friends that he influenced Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to stand bold obeying their God even in the bad situations they were facing. Nebuchadnezzar wanted the Israelites men with the best potential to serve on his cabinet. Some criterias were young, handsome, intellectual, and able to be brainwashed into the Chaldean culture. Now in order to do this, they had to do three main things. The Babylonians had to first change their Israelite names to Chaldean names. So Belshazzar name was changed to Daniel. Hananiah name was changed to Shadrach. Mishael name was changed to Meshach. And Azariah name was changed to Abednego. They didn't really care because they knew their real names. The second thing the Babylonians wanted to do was they wanted to change their belief by training and teaching them in the Chaldean educational system. Daniel and his friends didn't really care about that either because it would give them the opportunity to tell the Chaldeans what the word of God teaches and what their mistakes were. The third thing was they wanted to change their lifestyle. And that's where 
they put their feet in the sand and drew the line. Because even though the king and his cabinet members ate and drank the finest, it was first offered to their so-called idol gods. Also, eating and drinking was a major social event in those times. And it was all sort of connected to idolatry. So by not wanting to defile themselves, Daniel and his friends offered a challenge. That they allowed them to eat vegetables and water under God's favor for 10 days. Then see who was in better condition afterwards. King Nebuchadnezzar found favor in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in Daniel chapter 1, verse 20, it reads, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the, his musicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. By King Nebuchadnezzar finding favor in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he elevated them with his top cabinet leaders. And then all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar started having a dream that scared the life out of him. It had gotten to a point he couldn't sleep. So he summoned all his leaders and asked them to tell him his dream and then interpret it to him. Well, most of them replied, King, you tell us the dream and then we'll interpret it for you. But he could not remember the dream. So he demanded someone tell him the dream, then interpret the dream, or he was going to start killing them. So Daniel, through the second virtue God gave him, wisdom, you can see that in Ezekiel 28 and 3. He stepped up to be the channel of God's revelation to the king. Because he was the only one with the answer. Brothers, can you see God working this thing out for Daniel and his plan? Now Daniel reveals to the king his dream was of a statue that was in human form. But it's not an idol that you worship. Because in those days, dreams had significance. And this one very much did because it was from God. The statue head was made of gold. The breast and arms was made of silver. Its belly and thighs was made of brass. Its legs was made of iron and his feet was made of iron and the toes was mixed with iron and clay. This statue was top heavy because gold is heavier than seal, silver. Silver is heavier than brass and brass is heavier than iron and iron is heavier than iron and clay mixed. The statue was a prophecy about kingdoms that would rise to power after Nebuchadnezzar, a king in his days. The gold represented Babylon. The silver represented the Medo-Persian kingdom. The brass represented the Greek kingdom. And, iron, and the iron represented the Roman kingdom. Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar these four world powers will come to exist, starting with him. And after them, Christ will come back and restore Israel and reign king of all kings. Now, brothers, after Daniel revealed the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, he made him prime minister of the whole area, which made the other leaders extremely jealous of him. So they plotted against him and when the Medo-Persian Empire 
captured Babylon. Their king Darius also found favor in Daniel and he prospered. Also, let me say this, my brothers. No matter how disciplined we are in Christ, there will always be those who seek our demise. But let me give you to seek our demise. They resort to attack by attacking your faithfulness as here with Daniel. But let me give you some encouragement. If you're living right, treating people right, God will always make it right. Amen? Now let me close this out. The leaders, through their jealousy of Daniel, then conspired to have King Darius make a decree that anyone found praying for the next 30 days to any god or man besides him, the king, they would be cast into the lion's den. Daniel was committed to praying three times a day. And even though he knew about the decree, he was not going to compromise his faith to the one and true living God. Daniel was arrested and thrown in the lion's den. Some say Daniel was about 90 years old and they found no fault in him except concerning the law of his God. But here's the good part. Daniel put his protection, God, excuse me, put his protection around him because he was faithful and the lions never touched him. Hallelujah. In closing, brothers, as I end this brotherhood lesson, let's continue to grow in doing God's will so that we can find favor like Daniel. Thank you, and to God be the glory.